So show how. Good morning in Chinese. How about that? Good morning, everybody. Thanks for, uh, I guess I say the same thing every day. Thanks for checking in. Today is day 24. It's Wednesday, April 22nd. We're going to be looking at Psalm 67 through 70 and then Acts 19 through 20. The verse I picked out from yesterday is Acts 17, 11. I think I talked a little bit about it yesterday as well. It says, The Berean Jews were more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. I just like that. It's because they were so eager to study the Bible and so eager to learn. I like that. I'm a learner. I like to learn. When I've done some leadership tests, one of the things that I score high on is the love of learning. So I think that's why I like that verse. All right, look at the Psalms. Psalm 67 is a prayer of God's blessing over the spiritual community, God's, God's people. Uh, and uh, one of the things I think was interesting here says, Bless us, Lord, so that the world might know who you are. Because they'll look at us and see us and how, how we've prospered and how you've blessed us, and they want to know you. Psalm 68 is a hymn. It's really kind of a neat psalm. It's a hymn celebrating God's uh, procession from Mount Sinai to Mount Zion and all the victories that led. And uh, it's really about the history of Israel, how God led them out of Egypt and then guided them throughout the wilderness and then through the promise into the promised land and then ultimately establishing his kingdom with Jerusalem at the center and the temple it's a march from mount sinai where the 10 or the 10 commandments are given to to uh, moses and then to mount zion which is where the city of god which is where jerusalem is in the temple where the temple resides so it's kind of a neat neat hymn to read through it kind of gives you a good history the idea is that god's been powerful and has uh, carried out his purpose. And then the prayer is that he would carry out his purposes to the end so that all the nations of the earth will come and pay tribute and they will worship God. So remember in book of Acts, we, we've been talking about how the Jewish people were really surprised that other nations were allowed. But it's talked about this in the Bible all throughout. And it's just funny how they've forgotten that. That God always wants all people to be saved, not just a certain group of people. All right, Psalm 69 is a plea for help from God plea for mercy. There's a person, the, the writer has done something wrong and he's suffering for that. But along with that, his enemies are taking advantage of that and just causing more and more problems. So, so he's pretty desperate. And then Psalm 70 again is another urgent prayer of God's rescue. So we're getting back into those rescue prayers. In Acts 19, we see Paul in Ephesus. And Ephesus is probably the longest place that he stayed. He stayed there for about three years and preached. And um, uh, very successful church, and he wrote a letter to them as well. The, uh, the letter in the book of in the New Testament, Ephesians, was written to them. But he was very, very close with them, um, and he tried to start in the Jewish synagogues, but they kind of pushed him out. And so he went out and uh, started to preach in the streets and also in lecture hall. But one of the things I wanted you to notice there in verse nine, it says that they public the Jewish people publicly maligned the way, and that was the name of the church back then. It didn't use the term church. Uh, but it was called the way. And the reason is that Jesus said in his teaching, I am the way and the truth and the life. He said that in John 14, 6. In fact, eight different times in Acts, the church is called the way. So it made me start thinking, maybe that's what we should call it, the way. It's the way to salvation. It's the way that Jesus asks us to live. Uh, but notice these passages. You can look these up. I'll go slow so in case you need to pause. But look up Acts 9, 2. Acts 16, 17, Acts 18, 25, and 26, Acts 19, 9, and 19, 23, Acts 22, 4, 24, 14, and also verse 22, and then 2 Peter 2, 2. And then look in them up and see how they use the way. And it, you'll find it's very interesting. In fact, it's something I learned. I knew that it was called the way. I didn't realize how much it was called the way, more so than it was called uh, Christians. Uh, or even disciples. disciples is the main word that's used, but the way. I thought that was really interesting. It says that Paul spoke and reasoned in the lecture hall of Tyrannius, and many people responded in this area in Ephesus. In fact, it says all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. He was there long enough, and he must have been interested, and the Greeks were really taking it in. They really responded well, and it says the church grew. Uh, there's also a funny story in there about the power of Jesus' name. Evidently, some people would go around and say, in the name of Jesus, and they'd cast out demons. Well, there was a man named the Seven Sons of Sceva. That was his name. That's quite a name. He was a Jewish priest, and he would go around doing that. Well, one time he came across an evil spirit in a person, and he says, in the name of Jesus, come out. And the spirit looked at him and goes, now, Jesus I know, Paul I've heard of, but who are you? 
And then he proceeded to jump on the man, jump, jump on Skiva, beat him up so bad that he ran out of the house naked and bleeding. It's just kind of funny. I th I would freak out if that happened, but it's just kind of a funny story in there. But it says that the people feared the name of the Lord because that demon spoke and says, I know, I know who Jesus is. And then, um, but there was power in that name. And then Acts 20, a um, couple things to highlight there. Verse 7, it says, On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. And this is where we get our practice of doing the Lord's Supper every week. It's not a command. It just says that on the first day of the week, they got together and broke bread together. They had communion together. And they remembered Jesus. And so that's why we do it. It's just a precedent. Um, but that's where it comes from. And then finally, another there was another kind of funny story too. Paul was preaching, got way late into midnight, and there was a young boy, young man, uh, sitting in the window, a third story window, and he fell asleep and he fell out and he died. Now that's not funny, um, but Paul immediately went and jumped on him and hugged him, and brought him back to life. So that makes me fearful of doing any more long sermons because I don't know if I can raise you from the dead if I if you did that. And then finally, it's a really powerful section of Paul saying goodbye to Ephesus. And he kind of reviews everything that he's done there and, and what they mean to him. And he knows he's going to Jerusalem now, but he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. And uh, the Holy Spirit's telling him that he's going to have some trouble. And so this is just a really tearful goodbye to a people that he was really close to. So I hope you enjoy your reading today. Hope you have a great day. It's supposed to be really nice today. Talk with you tomorrow.